vaginal birth after cesarean section. Now, is that possible? Yes, actually it is. In fact, VBAC, vaginal birth after cesarean section, is quite a possibility. In fact, people who've had a C-section, 90% of these patients actually have a chance to have a normal vaginal delivery after one C-section. So, C-section actually has been rising the incidence. If you look at the Western world, it's somewhere around 29 to 30%. And in our own country, India, we have a higher percentage. Now, we wonder why it's happening. Is it really because doctors want to do C-sections? Maybe that's not entirely true. I think a lot of patients themselves want to have a C-section. Plus, with the growing medical legal aspects that we are now entwined in, I think a lot of people don't want to take a lot of risks. So, if we look at uh, vaginal birth after C-section, uh, who are the people who would fit into the right criteria, who would be able to try for vaginal delivery? So, we say that patients who have had only one cesarean section in the past, so one surgery, also people who have not had surgery to enhance reproductive facilities, meaning which um, operations, myomectomies, tumor removal, so any surgery on the uterus would, well, prevent us from trying to do um, cesarean, uh, sorry, a normal delivery after a C-section. We would want babies to be not too big, so under 4 kgs is what we would recommend. Also the time between um, the previous delivery and the subsequent contribute at least 18 months. We would also want that the uh, baby's head should be down what we call it to fat. So these are the criteria that we would like if um, we had to try um, vaginal delivery after a C-section. Now we must also understand that the, um, the, the, the vaginal delivery here would not be induced or augmented, meaning which we won't add drugs. We would not add drugs to enhance the labor or to initiate the labor. So we would have to wait for nature to kick in. So we'd probably wait for the day and then probably go beyond the day and hopefully uh, hope that the labor pain would start naturally. Now if that doesn't happen, then probably we'd have to surrender and say, well, we have to go for a C-section one more time. Now, we are worried about scar rupture. That's the main thing that frightens us. So the incidence of scar rupture, surprisingly, is very low if we are trying to perform a vaginal delivery in an individual who meets those following criteria. Like I said, uh, a gap of 18 months, only one previous C-section, no obstructive causes, no recurrent causes of C-section. So if we have met that criteria, then the chance of a scar rupture is actually just about 1%, which is pretty, pretty low. However, we do have to monitor Know, these patients for scar rupture. Now, scar rupture, if it happens, we would probably see the patient having a lot of pain at the scar site or, or scar tenderness. We would also see that after a scar rupture, the, the uterine contraction becomes a little important. It's a little irregular. The pain actually uh, dies down. The maternal blood pressure might fall because there would be internal bleeding. Uh, we would probably also see a lot of vaginal pain. The baby also would have what we call a prolonged and persistent bradycardia, a fall in the heart rate. So when we see these signs, we would then have to rush and go in for an emergency C-section. So scar rupture can be predicted, can we know from before that this patient is possibly going to have a scar rupture? We don't actually have any definitive tools, but some people believe that if you do an ultrasound, you scan the, 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 the scar area towards the end of the, the, the pregnancy, somewhere around 38, 39, 40 weeks as you go towards term, you can measure the thickness of the scar. And if the scar thickness is less than 2.5 millimeters, then there is a chance that the scar will approach it. Now there's another condition called scar dehiscence where the layers of the, the uterus actually thin out, but there's no rupture. So that's okay. 
very only body that the scar rushes through and through and then there's bleeding and even the, the baby might pop off and bleed the abdominal cavity. So if scar rupture happens then you have to rush in for an uh, emergency C-section. You should be in a facility which has all those uh, you know, abilities to look after such an emergency and sometimes we have to sacrifice the uterus which is quite frightening and sometimes we have to give blood. So I think the take home messages is that yes, vaginal birth after C-section is definitely a possibility. You actually have a 90% chance if you have uh, meeting the criteria that I mentioned. And if you do meet the criteria, then there's only a 1% chance of a scar rupture. So you should be well in touch with a center which is relevant. And probably the most important aspect is to have a doctor who's willing to do it.